Hi and welcome to the second part of this tutorial series. We're building a procedural world. It's an infinite world made by map magic and thalassophobia art assets. In the last episode we got to this stage where we had basic texturing, our terrain and some rocks placed. In this one we're going to get to this state which has a whole bunch of corals and so on in place. Let's get going. Let's have a look at some of these corals. These are the batched corals. There's a whole bunch of them but you can see they're all variations on the same theme. So what we want to do is in our scene we want to create some areas like these rock areas that are going to have corals on them. So let's open up our graph here and before we actually get started on this I just want to tidy up a little bit. I like to have everything grouped together it makes it easier to read and move things around. So just highlight that shift and drag then you right click and you go into group selected. You can give it a name and you can change the color as well. Let's just do both of these. So now that's done, let's add in a slope node so that we can grab the areas that are very flat. So let's put the visualizer on and get ready for that. And we'll uh, move that over so we can see the terrain. Let's have a good look at the whole area. That's looking good. So now we want to connect our height map into that slope node. And um, that bug again, um, you can't actually see it. Just turn it off and turn it back on again. Okay, good. And now we're going to go from really flat areas, so pretty much from no slope at all, all the way through to maybe 20. No, that's not enough. Let's lower that down a bit so we get more areas. Okay, now let's add in some Voronoi patterns here. So this will enable us to ensure that we get groups of corals. So let's put the preview on. I uh, have to change something to make the preview appear, and then you have to turn it off and turn it back on. All these bugs you have to deal with. All right, so let's, uh, well, not change intensity. Let's leave intensity as it is. Let's change the cell size. And you can see that we're getting these patterns in here. I think we want them to be a bit more organic than that, though. So let's switch them over to organic. There we go, kind of blending into one another. Let's uh, set this up. And then we're going to merge that in with the slope. So we need a blend node to do that. We're going to put the Voronoi in as the background and then we'll put the slope in as an extra layer and we'll multiply by the slope. So that will mean if we're not on the slope at all, then we'll multiply by zero so we won't get anything. And if there's nothing on the Voronoi, it doesn't matter whether there's a slope or not because we won't get anything. After a little twiddling with settings and things to make it appear, we can see that we now have a better pattern of these areas. We'll do a little bit more tweaking just to increase the intensity and break them up a little bit, get some more patches, and then we'll be done. So now we can add our layer into the graph. So add a layer over here. We're going to need a new terrain layer. So duplicate the sand one, and we'll call that uh, Coral. And then we can go in and we can have a look at the colors on that. Okay, let's make this kind of red, um, maybe a little redder than that, not so purple. There we go. So let's open the graph up again and drag our layer into the terrain layers over there. Wire up our blended height map and turn off the preview so we can actually see what's happening. And there we go. I still feel this is a little bit too intense, so let's go into our Voronoi and drop the intensity level there, and that will allow us to break up a little more, have a few smaller areas in there. Looking good. Now then, in order to use these textures to create the corals themselves, we're going to need to get this into an entry portal, and then we can reuse it in other graphs. So we'll call that text coral okay so let's take that and create a new part of this graph down here so we'll have an exit portal which will make text coral now you'll notice on the video i actually make this uh, the wrong selection we'll fix that later on it should be text coral and we're going to create a function and that is going to enable us to have a separate graph that is going to do our hard corals so let's create that so it's a new graph call it hard coral and we'll open that up. Okay, so in here we need to bring in an entry point for this function, and that is going to be called text corals. And you'll notice I make the same mistake again. I call this text rocks again. We're going to go and fix that shortly. We're going to need a scatter, 
uh, which if you recall from the previous video will select a bunch of places where we can place objects. So then we need an objects node in order to emit those objects that we're going to use. So let's put that in and then connect that to the scatter graph. And now we're going to select the object, which in this case is a batched coral. We'll just use one for now. We'll add the others in where we know this is working. We're not showing any of these yet because we're not connected into the graph itself. So we open the main graph and we drop our new graph into that function and then wire in at this point the incorrect exit into the uh, function. Um, we're just going to group these together and name it corals and I'm also going to give this a different color. The colors don't mean anything, they're just there for convenience. So let's open up our coral graph and now we can see that our scatter is indeed showing some places where it's going to be placed. And if we zoom in on the map on one of these places, we'll see that there is indeed a coral there. And there we go. But that isn't in the right place. It's not on the red colouring on the texture for the corals. So to sort that out, we're going to need a mask. So let's insert a mask into here. And we're going to put the textures into that mask. And it disappears. OK. Now it's at this point that I realised I was using the rock textures, not the corals textures. So I renamed the input to text corals. And then went back to the main graph changed that exit portal to text corals and connected that back up. I'm going back over to the corals now, we can see that we actually have this right. You can also see that I added in a contrast node here and we're going to use that to remove some of these corals that are appearing in the wrong place. So what's happening here is that on the texturing, because we're in a stylized shader that basically has one color, no merging, we're finding that these corals are emerging sometimes where that we're not on the coral texture because it's zero or one, whereas the actual graph is not zero or one, it's some value in between. So we're using the contrast to remove some of those edge cases. Now that we're happy with what's happening there, it's time to put in the additional corals. So to do that, we're going to need a split node. And what this does is it takes the input and splits it into different groups. Uh, and we're just going to use random splitting, but you can put various parameters on it uh, if you want to. And so we're going to wire that up, one of those layers, up to the original object we had. And then I'm just going to add in three others, or rather two others, uh, so that we have three different types of these batch coral. So now let's just add some variety in their rotation and their size. So that's an adjust node. Let's make some space for it here. And we're going to rotate between 0 and 360. And then we'll have a variety of size, maybe between, I don't know, 0.7 and 1.5 or something like that. OK, so that's that first hard coral. Let's have a look at what else we have available. Let's have a look at this blobby coral. OK, let's put a few of those in. Um, so first of all, let's get our graph a little bit organized. We're going to reuse these map elements in many different spaces. So let's just group all of these green modes together, which are about the actual object. And we'll give them the name of this coral, which was batched coral. And then we'll move the blue map nodes outside of that region. Now we can just go and repeat what we did for the batched corals, but this time for the blobby corals. It's going to be exactly the same as we work our way through. So I'm going to go fast here, speed up the video. OK, that's what it looks like when I've completed this. And if you're very eagle eyed, you'll notice that you can only see one kind of coral. And I figured out what this was. I was having the scatter graph create the nodes in exactly the same place. So if you expand the previews, you can see as I swap between them that they are in precisely the same place. And it's easy to fix that. Um, I'm using a random number generator and the seed is the same on both generators. So it's generating the same places. Just change the seeds, you get different locations. The next problem I found was this one here. The rock texture underneath this rock has gone, which has resulted in corals growing into the rock. And the reason for that is we're applying the texture for the corals after the rock. So what we need to do here is go back up to our main graph where we're texturing and we're going to add in the rock texture into the blend of the corals. 
So I'm just going to reorganize this. I don't like the way it's all crossing over backwards and forwards. So this is just a bit of my desire to be tidy. Um, once we have that done, we can take the rock texture and subtract it from the other textures that are creating the corals. And that will result in the rock texture staying under the rocks. So the next thing I want to sort out is this here. We have two of the same kind of coral just merging into one another. So we're going to open up our hard corals, make some space in here and add a rarify node. And what this does is it removes nodes that are too close together. So we're going to say that these can only be within 10 meters of each other. Now I'm going to speed up the video as I add a couple of new corals. But in a moment, I'm going to show you the inverse of what we just did. So here we have a very small coral and it's here on its own and it doesn't quite look right. So rather than rarify, I'm going to put in a spread node on this one. And the spread node, as we used it in the last episode of this series, will actually put multiple of these within one area spread over a particular distance. And so you can see that in action here. OK, back to very fast speed because we're just repeating the same things. But in a moment, I'll stop because one of these corals has a problem in that it dips into the ground like this here. This one is super simple to fix. Go over to your object node, expand out the rotation section and click terrain normals. And that rotates it to be aligned with the terrain normals. And so it won't dip into the ground quite so easily. And so I repeated that process for each of the hard corals, of which there was about uh, 15 to 20 or so. And what we have is a massive improvement over what we started with, which was just a few rocks and a bit of texturing. But it's still a very long way from what we're trying to get to. So there's a couple more videos in this yet. See you soon.